Hi guys, welcome once again. Um, today, Gary and I thought we'd take a break from showing you tutorials of the trainee instructors doing their level one, two, and three, and actually look at a real case study of somebody like myself. So Gary's gonna be looking at videos of me, and we thought it would be interesting to reflect back into history where I would have said I was probably skiing at my most dynamic um, point in my ski career. And then since that day, I feel like I've gone slightly back over, although you, you know, you try and put the brakes on, but through to a few issues with history, I can see here on the screen, um, clearly I've got issues with my knee, um, and that in itself, that knee is supposed to be replaced. But I've, I've managed to avoid replacing that knee through um, clever training, really, and and I want to avoid replacing the knee. Skiing is one of those things that actually triggers a lot of pain for me, whereas a lot of other things I do from cycling, even running, um, and um, the amount of work I do in the gym that, that Gary will um, be to tell you that I do a lot, it doesn't affect my knee because of the way I'm doing it. But in skiing, especially in bumps off piece, and now with the forces when generated through um, long dynamic turns or short turns more, we see issues. So there's a, a history of videos here. The first one's a little bit low quality. Would you like to watch it in history order, Gary? Yeah, yeah. Or? So I'd say we're going back here to somewhere around 218 with this video here. Um, and this is where I would have said I was probably at my best. Um, this is obviously, if I remember likely, was later in the season, you know, when you've had a chance to sort of get your legs. And this is on about, a, I don't know, a 19 meter ski. Um, and maybe just everything was, was clicking. But at that season, I had a, what I thought was a fairly um, strong season. I'd been working on a few little things. And I felt like, you know, I was getting into the positions I wanted to get into. One of the main things I think, Gary, that I was trying to avoid was strong alpine position. Yep. I was really being conscious to move inside the turn. And I think you yourself, when you compare the turns and the transition between the later uh, two videos, I feel like the transition's gone up and up and up. It's sort of like got higher mm -hmm. over the um, time. And that's slowing my transition down. Also, I love the position of how I'm looking into the new turn, the body's looking into the new turn, and um, everything just seemed to be clicking that season. Um, do you want to look at other ones, Gary, or do you want to make a comment on this one first? No, we can start with this one, because actually I asked you before, what is your better turn? Mm. Which one is the better turn? Because everyone has a good side and a better side, and the better sides feel awesome, and the other side is you're always thinking of, okay, I have to improve and improve. And that is the first question, what you feel and what you see. Uh, and we talked about, okay, the right leg turn, so to the left side, we talked about this, is better as a, as a left leg turn, so to the right. And uh, so Gary's talking about this turns better. This turn better. And this I like the it much more. Turn. And this is the weaker turn. And, yeah. and when you see this, uh, this is for me one point. Okay, how can you mirroring the the movements and and to improve this through through the years? I, <laughs> I have to tell, but but yeah, this is what because I see for me is. This turn is a nice turn, but this is just just on time, on mm. time, everything in place. And and you see this amazing edge angles, uh, edge angles. So, and there are some points when you can compare the two sides and say, OK, that's why. And this we know how hard it is to change that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so I would have said that was where I was at my optimum and um, we have a, a sort of turn which looking at the uniform on this turn here is going to be when we were skiing this uniform i think it was about 219 to maybe 220 we were in this uniform 220 221 and um, so this is only about two and a half three years ago um, and I feel already at this point, although, you know, people would look at this and go, oh, it's, it's, it's a fairly nice turn. And I like, I like the fact that because we were doing video that day, 
um, I was keen to get like airborne, get yeah. like some dynamic yeah. Yeah. Some stuff dynamic, to yeah. make it look, you know, getting jumping onto the edge and yeah. things. But of course, if you notice, I'm jumping onto the edge of that new turn because I feel safer in that good turn um, than I would on the other side. Um, but it's, yeah, it's very, uh, it's, it's similar, but there's some, some subtle changes already that I wasn't as happy with. But what's your opinion on this? Yeah, it shows actually on, on, on the good side and not on the better side that, that uh, it's not that um, stable. Clean. It's not that clean. Yeah. Uh, to come in the new turn and if you enter in the in the good side, you are just just comfortable with it. So so you can play. You, I can feel you, I can you can play. play with yeah, it. yeah. And this is this is a little bit so engineering how how you get the good feeling back. Uh, but there are a few differences between the two turns. Mm. Uh, it's really interesting because you will see that in the ages uh, and and in the years, it always there. For me, my turns as well. I'm always working on good side. So your better turn is definitely much more frontal. So square to the ski, carving, your axis completely following nose to nose, the ski tips, and that's how you can hold this great pressure. And, and that makes a lot mm. because you come to the next turn and you see that- I'll be breaking up. Yeah, it's okay go to the one before this because it was yeah this one here I, I feel like even the left leg gets caught behind almost it's almost i'm getting yeah, it, you you are more on the some a little bit uh, more weight you have on the inside, inside leg yeah. because you trust that leg more it's not about that you have more as on the outside but you use it in the turn and sometimes the outside leg gets behind a little bit mm. but you get it back and it gets a great pressure but for example when it comes to release it looks like you start to stand a little bit on the uphill side and then you get the pressure from the two ski to the airborne and then the other side if you just go 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 you land already on the new ski yeah and unweight the inside it, yeah. you see how the knee comes to the heli hansen yeah <laughs> yeah and, exactly. and you clearly land on the outside ski, hold the pressure. It's much more extended immediately. You have the inside platform, so the foot sole inside engaged on the edge, and you completely in balance from the top of the turn to the end. And then what's for me important, if you go back a few steps uh, there, that the tips of the skis coming in the same line so aligning the the tips at this that point in the turn yeah. this point in the turn so before you got completely the end you it comes forward and that is makes this possible. driving the outside leg do you think forward yeah or is it driving or forward? pulling the inside back or one of the both <sighs> this is <laughs> this is a nice this is something about we talked we talked before that interesting is what i tell you and what you understand if someone pulled back too much the the inside leg then is the danger that it's hanging on the on the on the ski boot it's much higher if i say okay focus on the, the end of the turn when you uh, then close at the end of the turn just drive forward the outside that the tips coming in the same line and that uh, it's easier to to get to to get some access to the joints so if the the leg goes forward then you can pull up the knee so that means when you have this dynamic pushing forward the outside, then you have all the access so you can clearly release. And that's what we see here. That mm. is just a nice movement and the knee comes and you're entering the other turn. Yeah, and as, as, as I a, mentioned before, this is it. because of the, I suppose, the, just the, 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 how comfortable I feel on one side, I think you're right, like the, the axis doesn't feel as, as good in the body and the position here. I mean, a lot of people will look and go, oh, that's a really nice turn, but, but these small things make a big difference. It's, but these are the small things, but yeah. working on long life. <laughs> yeah. And lifelong, sorry. <laughs> and if, if we then look at um, the latest um, ski turns from here in Cerro Catedral, um, I think we, we videoed the trainers over just two mornings because uh, we've been so busy with the course participants. We had no time to warm up. 
no time to ski for ourselves. Yeah, just, and we haven't skied since April, at least, you know. So I think just getting back on snow and then suddenly having to go full throttle down a run, um, it's not easy, especially for me nowadays. I, I do feel no, I it. I tell you that I like this project because I saw the videos and it's like, what's crazy? Okay, what do you want from me? No car that turns in this season. Okay, we are here on snow. That's good. But doing school stuff, yeah. stuff and, uh, and parallel basic turns and... Okay, come on, Next let's day. go, guys. It's the first <laughs> run. No warm up, no time because it gets busy. Come on yeah. and car, and you see this this four five runs. That's how quickly you you try to adjust yourself. And ah, the, the first was just not. Wow, that was awkward. Come on, next yeah. one, next one. But but and it's, it's the, hard. The, the, it's hard. It's hard. It's fully fully. But it was performed. mainly because of the slope. What I was saying to Gary was, it gets relatively busy on the slope really quick, and this type of fast dynamic carving turn you don't want distractions around yeah, yeah. you you don't want people no, no. staying across yeah, you yeah. so we unfortunately without warm-up this is my first run without any warm-up um going down the run we'll look at it at normal speed first um and here we are uh it's a, a relatively steep blue run it's not like an easy blue run and um that was the turn I did. It goes back and it'll come into uh, 100 frames a second. So you can see it in super slow-mo here. So what's your thought process here now in 2022? Um, almost five, six years since I really felt I was at my best. And now I'm way into my 50s. <laughs> How's it looking? Yeah, it's, it's, so it's, now I tell you that, that it's not about the age because... Uh, I want to ask you what was in this years your focus if you wanted something to change or you worked on something to change mm -hmm. because if just i said the performance is there so so you f you have great pressure you have a dynamic okay we see that you come a little bit up in the transition oh, yeah. uh, it can be as well the the length of the pole and uh, I have to say it's, it's pretty good. The stabilization is there. So you try to find the outside immediately. I think, I think the, the problem is, for me, you're asking questions. Like on the, on the second run here, was a, I felt really bad on the second run. The, the, there's two problems I have, everybody. I tell you, the first one is I'm running basically the, the biggest scheme board instructor training company worldwide. Yeah. And I am distracted in the office too much now. I don't ski like I used to. I used to ski nine months a year like you do. And nowadays, this season, I think I ski 12 days because the company's so big, I'm more office bound. And what I'm doing here, I can clearly see it, is I'm relying upon the fact that I'm very strong. I've gone back to almost like 10 years ago where I, I was just learning to ski almost and I was just using power and strength because I know my legs can hold that turn. Yeah. I'm relying upon power and strength and I don't yeah. feel fluid at all. Like on the first video, I just looked like no effort. Yeah. This looks this like a, this effort. Is a, this, is, this is a training. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we can see the this problem with the poles where I get bounced out the turn mm. as well. Um, They're just small things, but what, what you can see in this turns uh, <laughs> late. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a second run. That was, I know, I know how it was the, the snow was really Weird soft on that side. and yeah, the it one was very side. Soft. Yeah. But however, uh, this is sorry for this moment. <laughs> So there where you see, if I can compare with the old one, that that's a little bit late with the with building up the new platform. So if you go back there, mm -hmm. there is you are already toppling and toppling, let's call it. And and you have the platform on the inside foot sole. And the other one is a little bit maybe late. So it, if I go there. It's much more, you have a, a lower position, but... Uh, almost sublimated the, the leg, the bow leg, of almost pushing the outside ski off its edge because of yeah. the position as well. Oops, no. clicking on this one. Yeah. You see, it's late, yeah. late, 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 yeah. late, 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 And it's even so angulated, whereas I was saying before here, the concentration was more of 
more the of getting inclination inc side. Inclination side yeah, and I'm just then... looking for balance and power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's okay, but this is also the the, the season's first turn, so I was always okay. Just just find the platform, and we don't have the training in the season that you trust completely yourself in the first or second turn, just throwing your mass inside in the turn, and you know, okay, the platform comes back to you and build up. So this is actually what needs time and runs. Okay, I can do this. How is the radius? How far can I throw myself in the turn so for the inclination before I get the angulate and, and have the good platform? So this plays also a role in this case. Yeah. And But yeah, you are strong enough and trained that uh, you can hold it. Yeah. And that's the problem. Um, I was always when I was learning to ski, and I learned to ski late, about 36, 37 year old, um, I relied on my previous sports and training to use power. And it was always a problem for my coach to sort of she, to say to me, you need to stop using the power in your pelvis, your hip and everything, because you're just cheating the system and it's going to catch up with you in the end. And sure enough, it does, because then I, I remember spending three weeks with that coach just trying to learn again rotary movements steering properly from the right place because i've just been using so much muscle power um and i feel that that's what's happening there now i'm, I'm back to just being aggressive switch back yeah, yeah and protecting yeah. Yeah. everything um because i was saying to gary if i get the turn wrong it's like somebody stabbing a knife into your, your knee so you're really cautious of not getting that wrong you, you want to be perfect um, so yeah, it, it, it's interesting, but weirdly enough, there's, there's even a fourth turn, actually, I'll, I'll try and I'll find it and play it in here. And then I realized I'd been skiing these runs with my boots open, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is funny because I come down on the, the fourth turn and you can clearly see the boots are wide open and I actually catch the buckles of the boots yeah, in the yeah. snow and it sends me flying down the hills on my backside because I, I'm so low to the ground, it's actually dragging. But it's another example of where first turns of the season as well. And when I'm when I'm teaching anyway, I never do my boots up. And sometimes I then forget when I'm actually going to crank up and go for it a bit. Um, and I think if I'd been on a steeper run, I might have had a bit of a problem. <laughs> but yeah, um, so anything to add, Gary, on this? Because I think it'll be interesting for people. And I'm sure in the comments, many people will have a lot of things to say <laughs> about my skiing. Um, but... I hope that, you know, what Gary's saying helps a little if bit. If I, because you, you talk about hip and, and power and, and everything, uh, the better turn I really like because actually there is the hip on time in the new direction. So if you see this, if you go back there, mm. there, you see the uphill side with the pole plant, the pole plant helps you a lot, but now the, uh, the uphill side already turning yeah exactly in, yeah. in in the full line and and that makes possible that you catch high the high edge angle yeah. the high edge angle as well but it also that in this time on the turn in this part of the turn you are already in the strongest position where you can load the hip and load the whole system so you see that there is the the platform and the whole force goes through the center and you can balance slightly with 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 the upper body and with your fr frame and shoulders. So it's top of the turn, but you're already there, yeah. central. You don't have to adjust the body. You just run, go around the, the turn. And then because the hip is on time, you can easily align the skis in the same line and comes forward the leg. And that was it. That's how you get this fluid movement mm. and the other side it hits back at this point yes no 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 at this point when you start to lower the center of mass it turning a little bit outside from the turn you try to compensate with your arm a little bit but the strongest point you reach fall inside on this turn actually there, yeah, okay yeah. it's not the best no but it's but a good is, example of good falling reason. inside on this because this is where it's all wrong and i'm falling inside and i sort of catch myself there and but the I next recover. one is, and the next, yeah, of course you recover. Yeah. But this is for me a, a point that, okay, if you have a early platform, it's actually working 
from the platform itself if you try on the top of the turn just toppling with the ankle you need to move anyway stabilize your hip mm -hmm. and from other way around if you look in the turn and with this pole plant or this touch mm -hmm. you get the impulse like open door it helps from the upper body to get the symptom but mainly if the hip is there and you think about okay at the apex i have to catch the load what i get and that there i need a strongest position it's not end of the turn it's the middle of the turn somewhere so you jump in this one and that's what in the better term is nice and the other term is a little bit late mm -hmm. and that's how you see the difference is so small difference so there's little little differences yeah. But and I think Gary pointed, he was asking a question, I think he forgot he asked it earlier on because we moved on too quick. He was asking me what I was focusing on. And that is the number one problem for me at the minute. Previously, in each season, I would choose maybe two things maximum. And I'd work on two things throughout a whole season of maybe six months. Nowadays, because of the distraction of the workload, I don't have a focus. And that's a big issue. I'm not actually focusing on anything and if and if anything when i was skiing with the groups because i was teaching this time the only focus i had skiing with the groups because i think we all cheat a little bit when we're teaching we're always trying to teach ourselves at the same time i was thinking my only focus is to remove more vertical movement and that was my focus and i didn't on the actual runs i did i had no focus yeah but but this is you 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 say we are cheating because of no i don't think so <laughs> no, if, we're learning if, we're learning as we're teaching <laughs> if, yeah this is this is like okay if i have a group and i want to that the, that the group will be better in skiing and we do some exercises i try the same i do the exercise and looking for what i can uh, articulate, to, articulate, them, tell, articulate tell them. to them and and i don't choose an exercise for me i choose for the group mm -hmm. but i know in this exercise i can train for myself and and also have a focus for my own problems and if i'm looking back i okay i'm here for the group but that was makes makes life once easier about training the second is it's more fun yeah so that's how i like that's why i like really the school skiing if i do some exercises i try to do my best and focus on my stuff and that's how i try to get in training because we are much more with groups yeah. on the slope as for us right exactly for ourselves right. so this is good it's good stuff um guys comment below if you would like to see us look at the whole package of the trainers gary martin jamie the whole lot then hey tell us below and we can do more like this i know it can be sometimes very advanced for some of you but it's probably interesting to see how we look at things at the higher end um, and also obviously coming up is we're going to look at Gary's tutorial and there'll be a lot more from Cerro Catedral here in Argentina and my turns and Gary's turns the, too <laughs> from the fir first four turns in the season yeah nice. we're going to have a look at them bye for now thank you